What's up, everybody? Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. Behind me, I got a cool 1990 Buick Electra wagon to bring you. Technically, a Buick LeSabre wagon or a state wagon. Uh, they, I don't know why they changed the name. My 89's an Electra wagon. This is technically a LeSabre wagon. Same car. Anyways, 1990 would have been the last year for this car. This car is a 79,000 mile example, straight out of Southern California. Really excited to show you this car, tell you all about it, why it's even here. Let's take a walk around video or walk around of this car. We're gonna show you inside, outside. I'll even show you below this car because this car is absolutely amazing underneath. I'm gonna take a spin back to my shop, tell you all about it. Let's get into the video. And here she is, a gorgeously beautiful wood trim 1990 Buick estate wagon. Uh, this would have been the LeSabre estate wagon, like I said in the introduction, uh, or the Electra wagon. 1990 was the last year for this big boxy wagon uh, before they actually switched over to 91, where they had the bubble wagon. Uh, 1990 was kind of unique though, because it was the only year that it had the seat belt on the doors like the 1992 Bromes would have had. So this is a, I believe might be a one owner car, potentially two owner car. It's kind of hard to tell through Carfax, but the California title that I have for this car shows it um, as being retitled in 1996 and being owned by that owner, you know, ever since. But if you look at the Carfax, it's kind of questionable if that was the same owner and maybe retitled it. So I, I really don't know for sure. So we'll go with a two owner car, but the previous owner had owned this car since 1996. I shipped this car all the way from Southern California to get here. Um, why? I'll be dead honest. I have a bigger heart sometimes than I have uh, a head when it comes to making business decisions. And this car had to be saved. Uh, unfortunately, out there, these big old relics uh, sometimes don't get the love that they deserve. And this car probably would have ended up in a pick apart or a, some type of, you know, self-serve junkyard and would have never have survived. And this car really doesn't deserve that. Um, as you can see here, she's cosmetically challenged on the wood, especially on this driver's side. Um, how this car was stored, uh, I believe, was in some type of carport and the sun hit the driver's side of this car uh, and kind of gave it a little bit of a uh, termite damage on that uh, wood trim. But it gives it a nice cool patina look. The great thing with these cars is there's companies out there, stripeman.com, those type of guys, vinyl wrap places that replicate the wood on these cars. And it's really not that difficult to re-wood one of these cars, but it's a project. It's something that needs love. And it's not just the wood, it needs filler panels. Uh, there's some spots where the paint's thin on the car, uh, but it's a rust-free 79,000 mile wagon that deserves a little bit of TLC. And you know what? You just don't find these wagons anymore. One just like this, uh, just sold on Bring a Trailer for I believe almost $20,000. Uh, to find one that's rust-free is a phenomenal start. Unfortunately, with age, just comes wear and tear like this. Uh, but this car wasn't beat and abused. It's a really nice survivor example that just needs, um, you know, a good going through cosmetically. Um, and then just light freshening mechanically. I've put probably over 100 miles on this car, just tooling around with it. And it's an absolute blast to drive. So I'm going to go around the car. I mean, it's going to be hard for me to point out every little flaw, but I'm going to get up close and show you some of the things with the car. Uh, first thing we'll start with is on this quarter. You can see some old remnants of tape and I've been trying to chip it off, but honestly, it just takes forever. Um, this quarter window was blown out when I got the car. And I think that's why the people gave up on the car because that'd probably be a hard window to find. I found a used window. I had it professionally installed, um, but this tape's been on the car for a little while, probably protecting this from getting water and you know the weather inside. So I had this glass put in the car and I tried to get as much as of that tape off as I could. And they even put like kind of like a shrink crash wrap on it. And unfortunately I put it on the wood, which peeled some of it, but it doesn't look too, too bad. Like I said, this side of the car uh, shows better than the passenger side of the car. Uh, you have the aluminum polished uh, 
roof rack up on top. Let me get on this side of the sun. Uh, but you can look on the lower quarters of this car, absolutely rust-free all the way around on this thing. This thing lived in Hollywood and Los Angeles, California its whole life. Its owner moved around a little bit. Um, but I have addresses in Hollywood, uh, Los Angeles, and actually on the back bumper there's a LA parking pass on it. Um, so really neat there. All the glass, uh, you know, is in great shape otherwise. And see some of the weather stripping on the sweeps are starting to crack. But there's, you know, random little chips and, you know, marks on the wood. Uh, there's a very light indentation right here um, in the door. Kind of hard to tell with the wood trimming on it. And I come down here. Mirrors. Got some minor salt and pepper marks in it. Again, the paint on the car is kind of, I mean, it's mostly, I believe, original, but a little thin, a little tired. Um, you know, what this car would benefit from, pull the racks off, pull the wood trim off, pull the wood off, paint the car, new fillers, re-wood this car, it'll be an absolute knockout. Uh, you can see here, obviously some of the wood started peeling back on the edge of the uh, fender and started blowing off the car. Uh, it does have cornering lamps, has an older set of Cooper Trendsetter tires and wire hubcaps on the car. Aftermarket power antenna that does work. And you can see on the hood, there's chips in the paint. Uh, this is an original lacquer paint that's, you know, got lacquer checking. And you can see where it starts to flake off. Has the headlamp monitors. Come around the front here, chrome buckets. Uh, a little bit of glaucoma in both high beam lights. Minor rub marks on the bumper corners, but all the impact strips are in nice shape. A little bit of a ding right there in the front bumper. I thought this was cool. This was still hanging on there. San Jose, I don't know what Buick dealer might have been in that area. Got some paint chipping up on the front header panel here. And again, obviously filler panels. Those left the chat a long time ago. Um, coming around to this side, this headlamp monitor housing uh is unfortunately gone center strip on the hood nice shape got the stand up bjork tri shield hood ornament come around the front of the car here <laughs> again minor rub marks on the impact strips it looks like they might have torn this one and put a bolt through it seen that all too many times Again, cornering lamps you can see the wood is really delaminating up on these top surfaces here. Doing the same thing around this wheel well as well. Wheel well as well. Uh, but you can see inside, no rust at all. It has the Buick Estate Wagon emblems. I don't think mine has that. I think mine says Electra Wagon. So I don't know if that's a 1990 only thing. Let me know down in the comments for all you wagon uh, people who would probably know. And the, the paint on it shows well. I'm sure a little buff and some touch up, it'll it'll come back okay. Um, I don't want to say, it, you know, the paint is great on it. Again, it's probably real old lacquer paint uh, that was exposed to the California sun, uh, just like the sides of the car were. Again, over here, all the stainless is in pretty decent shape. A little bit of cracking in the weather strip there. You can see the wood here. You know, it's fading back. The bottom of the doors aren't, aren't bad as far as wood, but obviously you got to do the whole thing. Uh, but all these all these wood like tr tr trim surrounds, these just pop right off. They're all held on by little clips. So in theory, to rewood this car really isn't a crazy job. Take these uh, flares off. You know, the Phillips screws take the wheel edge moldings. These pop off. You'll have to take these off and retape or replace them. Pop all those off, peel all it back, and I'm sure it's gonna be a stink job to do this side, you know, because it's flaking, but, you know, a nice eraser wheel or something, we'll peel this all back, peel it back. I think it's like $899 is the wood kit for this car, these box GM wagons. Have a wrap shop, wrap the whole car again, put all that trim back on, and even with the patinaed paint, it'll look great. I always thought this was cool. A little fuel filler door slash protector from, I don't know, it's kind of awkward 
I would have thought they would have had it opening like this. I remember my dad hated my mother's wagon because it was hard to get, <laughs> get it was just awkward. I don't know, I would want to say hard, but uh, Cooper Trendsetters, again, these are older tires. Um, I don't think this car has traveled a ton of miles in the last 10 years, but it's been used on a pretty daily basis or, you know, normal basis, uh, just not far. This little clip is kind of broken apart there. Uh, the trim is holding on, bottom of the quarters. Again, rear fillers as well. Uh, it's gonna need a filler kit, uh, which those are available. Uh, this little amateur uh, tail light repair here is quite, quite comical. Someone obviously broke the tail light out and then you can see this old crusty glue holding this piece in here. Uh, but really cool here, AAA of Southern California, and then the city of Los Angeles uh, Department of Transportation residential parking permit. Uh, a couple little chunks out of this rear bumper molding, but the bumper is in real, real nice shape. Again, on the back here, a little bit of fade going on, some fade in the tri-shield, uh, a little bit of gasket pull back here, and then the weather stripping is cracked as well. But overall, the bones of this car is really, really solid. It's a very deserving car. You know, it kind of reminds me of that 89 that I had back over the, I think it was last summer or last fall. Um, the wood wasn't in as bad shape, but this car is a lot cleaner rust-wise, um, so it's kind of a trade-off there. Uh, but still a very deserving car. A little bit of mark going on the corner of the bumper there. Anyways, let's take a look at the inside of this 90 Buick LeSabre estate wagon, and then we're going to take it for a spin. All right, we're going to dive into the inside of this 1990 Buick wagon. And I'm gonna show you all the door jams like I always do. And that's what's really impressive on these, on this car, is absolutely no rust in all these door jams. Now usually you start to see something. It's a little bit maybe of just surface from the door. You can see where the uh, door pad or the door weather stripping, but it's not even blistered. It's like the paint chipped off there. Uh, real clean, I mean dirty, but clean inside here some of the weather stripping on this car you can see is a little tired i believe weather strip kits are available like i said 1990 was the one year only for the door mounted um what do you call it? door mounted seat belts like the 1992 brooms you can see a little bit of a color difference going on there uh but even the fabric up here is in really nice shape uh armrest got a little bit of warpage to it and the door lock button plug is in there but the button has gone a wall you know again shares it with the 90s Capri or 80s caprices a lot of the 80s gm uh, cars had this style door panel those are readily available as the pull straps here the chrome buckets your power seats which work all four windows even has power controlled mirrors inside the car here uh, steering wheel is in nice shape. It's not leather wrap. It's like a kind of a rubbery style wheel. Same wheel that's in my 89. Dash pad has some warping to it uh, around the vents. These vents are kind of loose. Uh, this one is broken. Uh, I don't know what this is here in the dash. My car doesn't have that. I don't know what that would be for. My car does have Twilight Sentinel, which this car does as well. You can see here the plastic or the plastic protective has never been peeled off that uh, carpeting is clean you know but dirty uh, does have a spot here uh, where obviously someone's lazy foot kind of wore through uh, but the upholstery on the car is in really nice shape this is the nicer velour as i say um, these cars also came with like a base kind of platy looking like taxi cab base 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 velour or cloth uh, this is a nice um, double stuffed velour, uh, I believe on the upper trimmed wagons. Again, you'll have to let me know down in the comments. My wagon has the same uh, interior style of the seats, but mine are leather, which I think is even rarer uh, in most cases of these wagons. Again, jams are clean rust wise. Um, I cleaned this car up as best I could. I wasn't gonna go too, too crazy on it. And you can see some of the weather stripping a little tired there. Rear door ashtrays. This cover is missing. 
basic door panels from the GM era. You know, you have windows switch and, and that was about it. Uh, get inside here. Rear floor mats are present. Both front ones were gone. Uh, rear map, you know, uh, I don't know, storage things. Uh, headliner in this car is actually really, really nice as well. It's actually two headliners. Uh, must have been replaced because there's no way that's original and still that nice. Again, velour on the back here, really nice shape. Doesn't look like this car was a kid's wagon. And when I say a kid's wagon is basically what these cars were designed to be, family trucksters, um, just by the cleanliness of this, it doesn't look like it was used as that. It's too nice for that. Similar to my wagon, it was a little old lady who originally owned it, and that was um, why the car was preserved so well. Back of the tailgate here has a two-way tailgate. Oh after you unlock it two-way tailgate cranks all the way open that's the easiest way to get in and out with the little youngsters or whatever climb right up on the bumper here but again all inside this tailgate very clean even up here you know this isn't all faded out which is kind of crazy of how nice the two quarter plastics are on these and even the upper door panels because usually those fade and they get all chalky and these ones aren't bad at all. Um, really, you know, pretty decent. I mean, they do have scratches and stuff like that, but usually those are all sun bleached. Same with up here. Fabric back here, again, is a nice shape. What's kind of odd with this wagon, though, is it doesn't have a third row. Now, I know these wagons well, but I don't know them that well. I don't know if you could have got these without a third row, because what's strange to, the, to me is the seat's missing, the handle's missing. This would be the handle to pop this up. Um, it's got the provisions for the seat belts. The bolts are there. Um, I tried pulling this all back. You know, this is like form-fitted black carpet for this. Um, you know, but, it, and this is factory. So I'll flip that up here. This is factory, but you know, mine has blue carpeting back here. And mine has the third row seat. So I don't know. I don't know what this is for. I found it in the car. Um, I don't know if these were available without seats in the back. Because it doesn't even have the cleats cut through these. Or cut through this material. I almost want to say that this car did not come with a third row. And it was meant to be like this. I don't know. So it does not have the third row. But obviously you could probably easily install it you'd have to cut the cutouts because you can feel the cleats right here for the seat bottoms um the seat would go on the back of this the back seat part and then you have the three seat belts right there i'm thinking this car was not equipped with the third row um i don't know let me know down in the comments if you've ever seen that uh the other cool thing with these 80s wagons and actually basically all these old wagons you have a two-way tailgate right down like that gobbles up whatever you want to gobble up now a car like this again I believe it was a single owner or elderly couple who owned this car it would make sense not to have a third row or maybe not option it with a third row if you don't have kids and that's why i say this car doesn't really look like it had kids in it uh you know there's no bubble gum or cheerio wrap uh candy wrappers or cheerios in the cup holders or anything like that so i'm thinking that this car came from the factory without a third row but let me know down in the comments again inside these jams again nice and clean door panel and the fabric is in nice shape up in the top it's not you know totally sun bleached uh, pull strap it's got a, you know, an 80s GM kind of smell to it. Not that it was, you know, smells god awful in here, but it's, I haven't shampooed with the carpets or anything like that. I really just vacuumed it out really good. Uh, obviously this isn't one of my prime units, but this car needed saving and I couldn't let it go to the junkyard just because of a rear quarter glass. Uh, weather stripping, again, a little bit of dry rot there. Now this door weather stripping, I'll show you when we get up to the top. Somebody had some crafty skills and they added some 
aftermarket and then there's stuff stuck to this one um honestly you're better off just to pull it off and replace it uh, i don't know why they just stick that instead of replacing it but old people do some weird things when it comes to modifying or fixing things um but i do believe these front door see all the door seals are available for these cars uh, door panel again over here is nice shape. This is the lock and unlock switch that's missing on the other side. Very simple. You can usually even find these in like the auto parts store, the help section, that kind of universal GM 80s switch. Well, maybe not anymore, but you probably definitely still get it online. Again, upholstery is in really nice shape on this car. It's odd is it's got a power passenger recliner, but a manual driver's side. You know, nice, clean, uh, not sun bleach, no cigarette burns. Definitely wasn't a smoker's car. Center armrest is in really nice shape. Honestly, as the only reason I love my leather in my car is because I know how rare it is, but I prefer velour and cloth. Um, if this car, uh, I would love to have this interior in my car, but I'm not going to swap because my car came with leather and I know how rare that is. But this would be my second choice. Uh, definitely. Uh, you can see the carpeting down here is in pretty nice shape. Some minor stainage. Uh, stainage, I don't know if that's a word. Dash pad again is decent, but shows some warping and those vents on that side are, are broken. It says here a state wagon by Buick. Unfortunately, uh, no owner's manual or anything like that, but right here we have a Pennzoil sticker. Looks like it was serviced 97 uh, with 39,000 miles. Thought that was kind of cool. Body by Fisher, of course. All right, let's pop the hood and then we're gonna take this old girl out for a spin down the road. I'm gonna pop the hood here. Oof. Wood pistons look like they've been recently replaced. Uh, I did put a fresh battery in this car. The battery in it when it came in was pretty weak. Uh, inside, you can see here, just all surface rust from, you know, very thin paint on the car. But I do, do believe there's a little, little bit of life left in the paint that could probably be buffed back on this car. Uh, but, you know, it depends what you're looking for. If you like that patina look or you want to restore it back to its former glory. Under the hood here. Insulation is original, not chewed up or anything like that, but you know, it just has its fair share of grease, has an under the hood light. Uh, all inside here, nice and clean and tidy. Um, the insulation off these AC lines is corroded or you know, dry rotted, um, but the lines are in still in great shape. The AC compressor engages, it has been retrofitted. Fortunately, it's so cold, well, cool here that uh, it doesn't really can't really tell if the air is working in the car. I believe it is working. Uh, looks like it's got new heater hoses, newer um, blower motor. You know, whoever kept this car up over the years from at least 1996 till current, uh, newer radiator, uh, did a very good job at keeping her running good. It's, it's actually kind of ironic. This wagon runs better than my Electra wagon. And I say that because I know my wagon pretty well. Um, this thing runs super smooth. Uh -huh. And you know what, being a California car, it kind of has to because I know they have such strict emission standards over there um, with their um, inspections. So these cars, these old cars have to run good or else they'll fail emissions and be a uh, big time polluter. Uh, you can see here, oh, no, I want to put my plate back there. This window switch, works uh it has the automatic headlights and like i said it still has the protective plastic film on there uh your windows the windows work i thought that window worked i know i put it down once before okay maybe not we'll try it over here it's weird it just made a sound like it wanted to work okay so we'll count that window out for now a little bit of slowness. That one works well. Horn works. Your door locks. Well, not on this side, but that side. They work. 
uh, tilt wheel, your wipers work. Um, what I just do. And I only say that because I know how my Electra runs. These old uh, 307 carbureted engines, I mean, just a flick of the key, uh, no pump on startup. I mean, I just obviously had it running, but uh, it runs so good. And I think you have to keep these old cars running good and tuned and carbureted is adjusted well in California because they have such strict emission standards out there, um, you know, because of their politics. Um, these cars can be designated as gross polluters if they don't pass through uh, their emissions. Uh, power seats work. Uh, your door locks work from that side. Obviously, you need a new switch here. I showed you that. I do know this driver's window works. I don't believe that side is working. Rears. Both work. One works. Twilight works. I showed you that. Try the wipers. Wipers work. Uh, that does work as well. Uh, let's see here. If we turn this on auto, you can hear the compressor engage on this car, so that's why I believe the air does work. And again, California car would be important to have uh, air conditioning, uh, but this is cool. This still works. I hate this though. <laughs> you think it just shoot right up, but literally you just got to push and hold. Uh, it's going crazy in the camera there, but the little LED lights, yeah, perfect. Uh, radio in this car, if you power it, antenna goes up. Sometimes you get signal, sometimes you don't. I don't know why that does that. Uh, pull that out. What's this? Push set button with five seconds push. Oh, this is to set the radio presets. Uh, ashtray, very clean. Already showed you in there. All right, so let's take this. Let's take this girl for a spin. She shows seventy nine thousand one hundred and fourteen miles. I want to say I put at least a hundred miles on this car. Uh, just tooling around and driving and it drives really well a little bit of an exhaust leak you can kind of hear kind of growling underneath the car um but we're gonna bring it back to the shop uh well actually we're bringing it back to the shop but i've already had it on the lift so i already filmed the on the, on the lift sh shot um i didn't see any obvious signs of um you know corrosion uh but we'll, i'll cut that clip in uh, one thing I did notice is, I don't know if you can hear it, but that um, speedometer cable is a little loud uh, in this car. She stops well, no pulsations to the brake, there's no grabbing or anything like that. Again, I've, I've driven it, um, I actually drove it more without the rear window in there than with the rear window, but... Now, she's a 307 powered, like all these big old uh, GM wagons were. Uh, but, you know, not a powerhouse by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but definitely a fun cruiser. Runs down the road well. Straight, smooth. And you a little bit of air draft from those... Um, door gaskets, especially over here on the driver's side. Uh, the other thing that I did notice too is the turn signals uh, do not cancel either way. So left or right, when you turn the signal on and you go and turn, it won't cancel itself out. Um, I don't know if that's something in the column or on the turn signal stock itself. signals work though see there it's still on 
shifts through all the gears smoothly. Um, you know, uh, this car, you know, I wouldn't say is road trip ready. It's road ready for local driving. Again, the tires are older on the car. I haven't gone through and I haven't serviced anything on this car. Basically, my goal was to get this car out here, uh, fix that glass, and I wanted to see this car get a loving home. Um, you know, it, it cost me, I shipped this car all the way from Southern California, costing me about $1,300 just to get the car here. Uh, but I love these old wagons so much. And, and I could see the potential. I said, you know what, maybe I'll take on a project, but I have so many cars just lingering around my shop. I really don't need another project. So you know what? I came to my senses on this one pretty quickly and I said, you know what? I'm gonna pass it on like I did the last wagon that I got. And that wagon, as far as I know, is undergoing the same cosmetic restoration that this one needs. Uh, this is a nice candidate though, because this is a rust-free California car. Uh, so any questions about this car, give me a call. My name is Anthony, 978-930-1004 check out my website specialtymotorcars.net price on this car is going to be $59.95 most important to me though I really want to find this car a good home so give me a call 978-930-1004 uh, check me out on Instagram specialty motor cars in H or on Facebook specialty motor cars here in Pelham New Hampshire don't let distance stop you from getting a dream car like this in your driveway because I can help you arrange all the shipping as well. Check out the merch store, specialtymotorcars.net for all your Papa Bay Anthony merchandise. And definitely give me a thumbs up down below. Let me know what you think about this wagon in the comments. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. All right, here's the bottom of the 1990 Buick wagon. You can see here, real clean uh, bottom quarters. Lower quarters are super clean on the car. Rear floor plan, floor plan, floor pan, gas tank, fuel lines, um, you know, super, super clean. Uh, rear tire, spare tire well, a little dent there, um, which is probably common. Obviously a little banged up there as well. Uh, exhaust looks good. It's got older rear helper shocks in it. Uh, so no level ride. I don't see level ride sensor, so must not have had it. Um, but the floors in this car are super nice. Frame, super nice as well. Come down the side here. Over here. Only one small spot of rust that I've noticed. Right here and right here, just kind of like scaling, kind of odd. Odd spot for that. This is the back floor pan. Frame is nice. You know, minor dampness. Nothing really wet or dripping. You know, it's been on the lift here for a week and it hasn't dripped anything. But it's wet. Um, yeah, just clean, rust-free California car. This is broken like it is on all of them. You can see the bottom of the fender is real, real clean in there. Anyways, any questions? You got my number. One more time though, 978-930-1004. Talk to you on the next one.